Something that I think a lot of people want to know from mm -hmm. you especially is how to get away from a conversation. Because we've talked a lot about how to start conversations and how to meet people and how to create good nonverbal first impressions. Yeah. And now we want, and we'll do more of that on the Jordan Harbinger show because sure. you and I have unfinished business literally. Yes, always. We, we're going to create like a dozen hours of stuff, uh, hopefully up here in Portland where, yeah. where there's perfect environment for getting a lot of work done. Slash. Lots of rain. It makes Lots... you really productive. Exactly. M makes you really productive and also makes you just, there's not, I mean, if there's nothing else going on. You have to work. You got to work. Exactly. It's not as tempting otherwise, but people want to know how to get out of situations. We talked about getting into social situations. Let's talk about how to get out of it because especially for the ladies, I think there's yeah. a lot of, okay, how do I make it stop? Yeah. Okay. So what's so interesting is I accidentally figured out this was a skill because hmm. I was teaching first impressions as mm -hmm. a skill. Right? I'm like, you know, make a grand entrance, come in and wow them, right? All like that, that's a skill. And then I realized that you could have the most amazing first impression, a really great conversation, but if you don't know how to exit the conversation, it ends so awkwardly. Yeah, you're like, sure. uh, okay, well, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Right. And then you're like, I'm I messed it up. Like yeah. I think the other skill is leaving a lasting last impression. Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. so I think these are two skills and they're very different. So here's my favorite process for I call it a graceful exit. Okay. Okay, so first is you wanna warm you you wanna have a cool down. You know how like in any workout you have a warm-up? You have the workout and then you have a cool down. It's the same thing on a conversation. The warm up is like that initial chit chat, that first impression, conversation. And then when you feel that lull, right? Like maybe a couple silences, maybe you have to go to the bathroom, whatever yeah. it is, you want to start mentioning verbally, okay. giving them cues that we're sort of wrapping up. There's a couple ways so, to do this. So don't just start backing away slowly. <laughs> like the, like the, the, the cool down is like yeah. a slow back up. The cool down is like, is there a table behind me? No, I got <laughs> well, 13 feet to go. That could work. Yeah. That could work, especially if you're very graceful. Right. And we will talk about nonverbal cues too. Okay. But I like the verbal first. So like verbally, uh, future mentions. So people subtly get this. If you're like, so what are you up to this weekend? Mm -hmm. What are you up to later tonight? Like that, that future mention, it gets people out of the present and it can segue into, well, that sounds great. I hope you have a great weekend ah, doing X, Y, Z. Alone. Yes, yeah, so without me <laughs> without there. Me. Yes, so the future mention can be a really nice segue for them to know that that's coming, but also that you're about to then say, wish you the best with that. The other verbal thing you can do is begin to wrap up what you talked about in the sense of, wow, that project sounds super interesting. Well, I'm gonna have to reach out to you on LinkedIn. I would love to hear more about that. Or, um, did you have a card? I would love to see that. I would love to hear more. Trading cards. Right. That is also, okay, we're moving towards the end. And then the other verbal segue is, so I'm gonna follow up with you probably tomorrow or Friday. Does that sound good to you? Mm. And so you're giving yourself a, a runway. Yeah for yeah. um, a really easy exit where they can also not be taken by surprise. The worst thing when they're when they're like, oh, wait, what? I wasn't sure we were yeah. done yet. Yeah. I noticed that a lot of interactions sort of have this natural fade out, but you don't know if the other person is on the same page, right? So yes. if I'm talking with, with you yeah. and then I'm like, all right, well, we're at some conference and someone else comes up and kind of says, oh, hey, Vanessa. And then I'm just like, <clears throat> right, I'm standing here because <laughs> yes. they didn't do that or I have to be like, hi, I'm Jordan. And then like forcing my way in there because otherwise yes. I'm standing around. Or you start engaging with that person and then I'm like, oh, I guess we're done talking now. So then I just sort of wander up or I go, or stand silently. see you guys later. Yeah, stand silently or you're like, bye. And right. they're like, oh no, don't go. And you're like, but I was standing here silently frozen. I'm not participating in the interaction. Okay, so this, this, is, a side conver this is a side tip, but I actually think it's important. I think it is your responsibility if you are interrupting someone. So if you're the interrupter or if you're the person who knows both people. So it's your responsibility to make a smooth transition. So if you're the interrupter, not only do you have to be like, hey, Jordan, I haven't seen you forever. Oh, I'm so sorry, did I, did I interrupt? I didn't mean to. That is actually your responsibility as the interrupter to be a smooth interrupter. Ah. Because it gives them the opportunity to be like, oh, oh, no worries, um, yes, follow up with me on that. So they can finish up a thought that they might've just had, or no worries at all, we were bored out of our minds, so glad you're here. Right. <laughs> it's like, yes. so it's, the, the interrupter has to do that, ask for permission to enter the conversation. And then if you're the person who knows both Jordan and Danielle or Jordan and Jen, I would have to say, oh my gosh, you have to meet each other. Um, let's see, in common, I think you guys, I think you guys actually have this in common. 
because that otherwise you have that you make everyone awkward mm -hmm. so that's an interesting that's an entrance cue and it, le it prevents awkward exiting what happens if you're interrupted by a not polite interrupter yes. you, you got to do something about that right so the the aforementioned oh hey vanessa and i'm like oh all right my strategy is always to sort of like bull in a china shop introduce myself <laughs> as soon as everyone takes a breath i'm like oh by the way i'm jordan and i'm like you should feel bad <laughs> yes. about not introducing yourself i actually like that yeah. um, and that that's a, a i personally think that's really good because otherwise i hate it you know this you've been in a conversation where it's a group of people and there's a silent person who hasn't been introduced and hasn't said anything and you're like it the elephant becomes like louder and louder and louder yeah. and you know why it usually happens why i think it usually happens what someone doesn't know their name Oh, for sure. Yeah, right. This is, um, dang it. Like, you don't want to bring it right, up. Right, right. So what like, happens is... Who have is, I been talking to for Like, this hour? is, oh, like, this happens to me too. So, like, what you're, you're talking to, like, let's say that we just met. I didn't know your name. And then all of a sudden someone comes up and I'm like, oh my God, I don't remember this guy's mm. name. I'm not going to introduce you because I'm afraid. So then you end up standing there awkwardly. So first, I love the bowl in the china shop of, like, I'm Jordan, even if I remembered or not. And if you don't remember someone's name, there are ways you can subtly get around it. This isn't your, quite your interrupting question, but you can say, um, uh, so you introduce the other person first. Mm -hmm. So I could say, Danielle, uh, meet my new friend. Danielle, tell me about this. And then usually Danielle will ask, what was your name? Or you can say, my name is. So sometimes you can leave it up to them. I also have a rule with everyone who I'm close with that if I introduce them first, I do not know the other person's name. <laughs> That's a cool hidden rule, but it you is. need to have it established beforehand. Usually, but not, not always. Like, for example, my husband is the best at this. He knows this really well, that if he walks up to me and I'm like, this is my husband, Scott. He knows before to even give me a chance to say, hi, what's your name? Ah, nice. Jen, we got to steal that. <laughs> you, every, you, all of your wingmen, all of your wing ladies, yes. they must know that rule. Luckily, even if they don't know the rule, you can try it and mm. it usually works. Because you introduce them first and you kind of give them the floor and then they go, oh, hi, what's your name? So it like kind of puts Smooth. the onus on them. So names really helps, um, even if you don't know. Um, but it, it Right, because no one's ever going to go, oh, so what's this person's name if they're never. standing right there? They're never going to do that. They're going to ask the person, what's your name? Right. And then or you're the, like... Or they're even more awkward than you forgetting their name, so then you're off the hook. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, God, weren't they weird? How, who does that? <laughs> How who rude. In front of you? Also, I'm a big fan of like, don't know their name. I'm just going to take a long... <laughs> Yes. Drink a water. Mm. Uh, yeah. And then also when you're drinking water, other people know they have to talk. Right. 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 So if you're like, hey, this is Danielle and you take a big drink of water and they know that it's their turn to say something and they usually will. Just going to take a nice long <laughs> sip of this. So if that happens <clears throat> in an interview, it means I don't know what to say. It's your turn to talk. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I love that. That's what that means. Um, you were talking about interrupting. Right. So okay. if you're, the question was... Yes, if you're the smooth interrupter, great. You're supposed to do that. Oh, excuse me. Hi, my name is this. Did yep. I rope everyone in? But what happens when someone just plows in? Mm. Hey, Vanessa, I haven't seen you in so long. Because you step back because you're polite. Or the person, the other person steps back because they're polite. And then I'm just, since I've stepped back, I'm just losing social status like every second yeah, that goes true. by. That's true, yeah. And I don't, I'm not one to be obsessed with social status. But it is at some point you just feel like, okay, I feel like such a schmo. Yeah. Not, I'm furniture now. It's been a minute and a half. It's so weird. No one's talking to me. Yeah. Am I supposed to just leave now? So here's, so there's a couple different ways you can think about this. And I actually like to break it down really specifically. Mm -hmm. So first you're break, breaking into a group. Let's talk about a group of people. Yeah. So my favorite strategy with a group is if you enter into a group that's in a conversation, most likely you will be sidelined because the group flow doesn't want to be like, oh, who's this new guy standing around? So what I like to do is in a group actually sidle up to the one person who has very, very open body language. Mm. So usually there's one person in the group that like has their shoulder kind of out, like they, they, they don't have a closed circle. They might be kind of looking around, overhead gazing. There you're in. So I will usually make eye contact with them, sidle up to them and say, hey, you look like you're having a fun conversation. Can I join? Mm. That way I'm making this person my introducer. Yeah, they're now responsible. They're responsible Because they're not going to go, uh, no, it's obviously private. You're right. in some sort of networking event. Right. And also you're, they're kind of, and they usually, they will take a step back, 
put their arm around and say, yeah, come on in. So the other group knows, oh, this person has been accepted. So I almost always will never cold approach a group because no one knows what to do with you and no one's taking responsibility for you. Yeah, I like this. I've definitely done my fair share of cold approaching groups in a past career oh, uh, yeah. as, as a guy who cold approaches groups of people. <laughs> but the, the trick always at that point, and this is far less graceful than what you explain, is to find the two people, like you mentioned, if oh. there's one or two that are sort of more open, and just sort of place two fingers, one on each of their shoulders, mm. and they will naturally turn to face you. And so then like you're, this? Yeah, really yeah. just like this. Yeah. And they'll open up and let you in, but then you can't just stand there and be like, continue. You have to, <laughs> right. you have to, at that point. Carry on. Right, no, don't mind me. You have to, at that point, be like, hey, I'm Jordan, by the way. Sorry, I realized I haven't met you guys yet. And yeah. even if there's absolutely no reason why you should have met them already, yeah. If you're at an event or any kind of mixer, then people will go, oh, right on, because it's kind of what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. So you can just kind of confidently stroll in there. And then what I've noticed at years of doing this is uh, if you get into a long or extended conversation mm -hmm. with one or two of those people, they'll go, so how do you know everyone else here? And you realize at that point, they have no idea yes. that you just met everyone. Yes. And that's everyone's objection is, oh, well, I, it's gonna be weird. No, every single person in that circle assumes you knew one or all of the other people in that circle. Yes, and it's the same thing when you make someone be your sponsor. They think that you knew the sponsor. Right. Right, like whether you did or not, they just go, oh yeah, like it's a friend of a friend, which immediately gives you social proof and immediately gets you in. I also think if you're brave enough to say, oh hey, by the way, like I'm Vanessa, mm -hmm. cool. The other way that you can do it is the kind of the warm up. So one thing that everyone loves is when people laugh at their jokes. Yeah. Everyone loves it. They love, they love, people love laughing when you laugh at jokes. They love sure. oohs and ahs. So what I like to do is I might not like say like, hey, I'm Vanessa just here, but I'll make sure that I am demonstrative with my um, social approval. Okay. So I laugh, I make more eye contact, I ooh and ah. So by the first few seconds of a conversation, you actually are already in the group because people are like, oh, she's a laugher, she's a supporter. Mm. They feel like you're already in there. And then what you can, if you really want to, is then add in like little interjections like, oh, really? Interesting. Mm. Wow. You're already in the conversation then. Like whether or not they know your name. And then and then after that you can say, oh, by the way, I'm Vanessa. So nice to meet you. Yeah, that's that's nice and smooth. So it's kind of like the slow warm-up. So I do want to bring up a really interesting kind of interruption that happens a lot. And I have very specific cues for this. I don't know if anyone watching has an interrupter in their life. So this is someone where you're in a conversation. I'm that person, but yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Continue. <laughs> You are an interviewer also. So yes. It's your show. You're allowed to interrupt right. me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's getting too much attention. Let me fix that right now. <laughs> Let me add in my really Back to me. witty, smart anecdote. Yeah. Okay, so if you have a Jordan in your life, all you have to do... I'm just joking. You're not actually that... Long, <laughs> extended sip of water. No. So I'm talking about... This is like a really bad interrupter. This is someone who... They'll literally ask you a question, and while you are about to launch into it, they, they just like go into their next question or mm. they go into their story. You know those people. They're yeah. rough. So I have a couple people in my life, so I have a couple strategies I thought I would show you that are Please. my favorites for these. Let's do it. Okay, so um, if you're with someone and they do that to you, one thing you can do verbally to prevent them from interrupting you is what's called bookmarking. So do you do you know about have you? Have I've used about? bookmarks before. <laughs> okay, this is not. <laughs> this is like this is a emotional bookmark. Okay. Okay, so an emotional bookmark is you basically tell someone how long you need before you start talking. So for example, if you say, um, actually I've lived in three different places. Someone says, where are you from? Right, it's very calm. Where are you from? Actually, I've lived in three different places. They know, they cannot talk until you've gone through all three places. Mm. Or if you say, um, oh yeah, so uh, there's actually two different phases. First, they know that there's a next that's coming. So you're like table of contents-ing your yes. next sentence. Yes. Or next few sentences. Yes. And they know this, so they mentally prepare, ah, I have a few seconds off. Mm. A lot of the times I think interrupters interrupt out of fear. They're afraid of silences. They're afraid of being boring. And they're afraid of running out of things to say. So in their head, they're like constantly active of thinking the next thing. And so once they come up with it, they want to, they want to ask it or share it right away. But if you say, I have three things, or I have two things, or first, second, they will be like, oh, I have a break. Right? Like this person's going to probably talk for the next 30 seconds. I'm good for 30 seconds. So that's one way to prevent an interrupter, especially if you have like a boss or a colleague interrupts in meetings, that works really well. What about the just the socially unaware uh, interrupter yes. that 
isn't going, oh, there's three things. They're just going, what am I going to say next to prove how interesting I yes. am in this conversation? Because okay, everybody so, knows those people. Oh, yeah. So the, then next level. So we're talking about levels of interruption. So the first one is bookmarking. Hopefully a sane, logical person will say, oh, I should wait my turn. Okay, but let's say that you have someone who has to be escalated. The other thing that you can do, there's three nonverbal cues I'm going to teach you. Okay. Uh, the first one is called, I call it the fish. So <laughs> the, okay. fish, the fish, I want you to just try to guess. The fish. It sounds like you're just wiggling in there. Oh, I don't know. Am I close? That, that, no, but that's a, good, <laughs> that's a good guess. No, but that's what fish do. So yeah, that's a good guess All though. Right. Okay, so you're gonna you're, you'll get it once I do it. So when you're talking to someone and they interrupt and you open your mouth, th we know this is a nonverbal sign. So it's like of, a fish face. Yes. Yeah, so it's like so I'm like. You mm. can't see me doing that, but it even makes that kind of popping noise. Right you know, oh, she was about to say something. Or like she was literally mid-breath or mid-sentence. So if someone's interrupting me, I will sometimes be like, mm -hmm. and they know that I am holding my mouth open in that kind of O format, like a fish, because um, I want to say something. And it makes them feel rude. Yeah, that that's a, a common technique that I have to use on this show sometimes if I'm interviewing someone live. Not you, of course, never. because you're experienced. How, no, I wouldn't say never. Mostly never. <laughs> yeah, mostly, that's honest. Yeah. That's true. Mostly never. I'll take it. But you can also do this with your hands, where you, right? Is this, was this, am I you got it. jumping you got the gun here? Yeah, yeah, you got All it. Right. So, like, the second one is we are trained as humans to know that this, our hand up, palm out, means stop. Right. And so, if you will be like, or you put your hand out. So the subtle one is just the hand out, mm -hmm. right? Like it's almost like a uh, um, pause. But if you really want someone to stop, especially like in a larger group, you can actually like almost. It's like, almost like you're raising your hand or stop. A gentle way to do this for me as a host is to have that hand out with my fingers open. Mm -hmm. Somehow fingers closed is a little bit more forceful. Mm. Fingers open is kind of like. I'm reaching for something, but really I'm just reaching for you to stop talking for five seconds or even five milliseconds so that I can interject <laughs> yes. because I'm trying to keep this conversation on track. It works it works perfectly in person. So you can do, I like, I never heard it. That's true, actually. I don't know why that works. I don't know. It's just from testing it, this looks more forceful with my fingers closed than it does with my like, fingers I think it's like, this is like stop, right? Like yes. if you're really, really, but like a casual kind of putting your hand, it is like just a little mm -hmm. pause. So you can also, by the way, if this works for your brand, you can also do the pupil. The so pupil? Just, just like one second, just like w w one second. Mm. So it's like just one, that's that's lot, like that's top level, like someone who's really bad at it, right? Cause like what do parents and teachers do to little kids who are talking? Shh. Oh yeah. So we know that this is a sign of like, wait one minute, shh, or it's not your turn yet. I'm trying to think if this looks, oh, it looks like I'm thinking, but it also looks like you might let me in. Correct. Because I'm thinking and like, I obviously have right, something. For, so I just did yes. it also though, I was like, that, 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 yeah. I actually didn't have anything to say, but I, like... Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. Interrupting. <laughs> did, oh, no, I don't have anything to contribute. I'm just, <laughs> I just trying to control to the you. conversation. I wanted to show you how it worked in person. So, but like, it, it somehow, if you're like, oh, aha, Eureka. It actually looks like you're having the idea, but actually what you're doing is, please just wait one second. Mm. Um, so those are the kind of like nonverbal things you can do pretty easily. And of course, the last, absolute last level, touching them. So... Oh, right. Right, if I put a hand on your shoulder, it like you know that's kind of turn. immediate. Yeah, that's something that works really well if you know the person. Mm -hmm. If you don't know them and they're a guy, you can get away with it 99% of the time. I would say be careful doing this to women if you're a man, mm -hmm. not universally, but it can be a little aggressive if you don't know the person at all and you just suddenly reach out because totally. they might not that they would get the wrong idea, but it might just be like, whoa, I don't know you. Yeah. And some people are highly uncomfortable with this. I've learned that the hard way in the past. I 100% agree. I think that touch is the last level, um, especially if you're touching the opposite gender. When, mm. Women to men and men to women, um, the absolute last level. If you touch someone and they recoil or like stiffen, you, I actually apologize for that. Yes, definitely. Like I'm like, oh, sorry about that. I'm so, I just, I just got get, excited for yeah, a second. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because then you're at least saying, I'm sorry, I acknowledge that. And then you try to like diffuse the awkwardness with like a little bit of humor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So totally agree. Last level, I'll, I'll even take that tip away. Cause if you can't get someone to stop talking with the fish, the finger, <laughs> mm -hmm. And the palm. It just sounds funny, like the yes, finger. like the the fish, the finger, and the, right and, the and the and the palm. They're not someone you want to talk to. Yeah. Anyway, it, I think it typically happens in professional situations where you can't get away from them. I mean, if you're in a social situation and you can never talk, this is a person who maybe needs a little bit of a lecture after the conversation. Like, hey, you know, you you never let and you can never. 
it's better to lecture somebody about somebody else, right? If you if you have to do that. So instead <laughs> Wait, of you never let me talk, it's a you never let Jen speak. I noticed that. You know, oh. you never really let Jen speak. That way you're sticking up for them. You're not just forcing your agenda on them. Oh, I like that one. Like standing up for someone else. Right. Even though you, you're like, I know she's too polite to say this, but you never really let Scott talk. Oh, wow. That's such a good tip because then actually, like, then you, you're kind of in on it together. You're not right. criticizing them about you. Yeah. You're just like, I know she, and also you can be like, I know that like Scott's a little shy. Yeah. And I bet you that she doesn't even notice you're doing this, but I feel like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, we should let her come out of her shell a little bit more. I love it. Yeah. Love it, it. It tends to be something that you can get away with. As long as the other person's not there. Otherwise, you're just throwing them under the bus. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Right? Oh, you never let Jen talk. No, I'm fine. Shut up. <laughs> or then you get someone who's like, I just want to apologize mm -hmm. to you, Jen, for my root. And they're like, what? Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Oh, everything's That's fine. like even worse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. No, Jordan said that you were upset that I was always interrupting. And I'm like, check, please. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> you're so, fighting your wife's battles. It's yeah, good. Yeah, not that, not that she needs that at all. <laughs> so how to make a graceful exit with social cues. We talked a little about the future mentions. Yes. Oh, that sounds really great. Yeah. Have fun with that. Or that sounds really exciting. I hope you enjoyed that. And then follow-ups. All right, I'm going to get back to you on LinkedIn or yep. give me your card. I'll make sure I follow up tomorrow. I want to get a couple more clear verbal sure. exit strategies. So we already have, have a great time with your weekend plans. Here's my business card. I'm going right. to follow up with you on LinkedIn. I'll be sure right. to follow up on this. Good luck with your project. What other ways can we sort of gracefully slide out of something. Maybe we're not in a business situation, so yeah. we don't want to follow up or we they don't have some project that we're going to follow up with. We just want to get the hell out of there. Yeah. So one of my favorites is um, like a very soft compliment. So like, um, for example, oh my gosh, you are, that story was amazing. I like made my night. It was so great talking to you. Thanks for making my night. That's also like a very like nice way of saying like, you're great. That was a great story. You made my night. Great talking to you. It kind of leaves everyone being like, It's all downhill oh, from oh, here. Like, See you later. You could literally say that. Do you know what I mean? That would be like a very funny thing to say. So yeah. kind of that compliment of like, you were the highlight of my night. It was so good talking to you. Everyone, and then everyone kind of walks away going, ha ha ha, like a jolly. Like, I'm so, ha, ha. I'm so entertaining. Yeah. Why is she gone though? <laughs> I'm that great. Where did she go? Shh. They didn't realize yeah. that until later. Right. <laughs> they don't realize that yet. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Nice. Okay, good. One that uh, I stole from you yeah. is... I'm going to go say hi to the host. I'll catch you guys in a bit. And you don't have to catch them in a bit unless it happens organically. Exactly. And no one's going to be like, how rude. She went to go say hello to the person whose house we're in. Exactly. How dare you? Exactly. So that's like one of my favorites. Host. Fill in host with the boss. With, right. Um, and, and you can also do this with, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I see one of my old college friends. I have to go talk to them before they leave. Or like, it looks like my friend's about to, about to leave. I want to say goodbye to her before mm -hmm. she leaves. All of those are very legitimate reasons to go meet someone else and it gives someone like, oh, okay, like they have, they have another purpose. Same with, I'm going to go refill my glass. If your glass is on the empty, people actually do usually notice it and they're ready for you to say, I'm going to get a refill. Do you want to join or like, should we chat later? So you can also use that as an example. So refilling your glass, going to the bathroom, getting something mm -hmm. to eat. Um, I almost always am a grazer at these kinds of things where I can easily refill my plate as, as opposed to sitting down and having one giant meal. Ooh, a good strategy. Because it kind of gives you an out. Yeah. A little like, bit. Oh, these pizza rolls are really good and they're going fast. It, ex no joke. Like, mm -hmm. exactly. Like, yeah. I, got, I, gotta, oh, I gotta go get a refill before they all go out. Yeah, they like, have crab rangoon here, so screw you guys. I'm out. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. These things in a blanket are to die for. Yeah. I've used that before, like, not <laughs> joking at all. So yeah, so I think that those ones compliment yeah. and reasons to go. Oh, I love it. Okay, great. And so we have those sort of professional and not, I guess, more personal party excuses to go back. Casual, like casual. so casual, right? Like, so, you know, you were great. This is so, you're so funny. Right? People mm -hmm. always like to hear they're funny. Of course. Um, and slash other friends came in, people get, also there's a big influx of people. The mood can sometimes change and people are very open to, oh, like clearly there's new people here. You want to go chat with them. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I dig that a lot. And this sort of dovetails nicely with something we talked about earlier on the Jordan Harbinger show, which was bringing people to networking events and then it's like, oh, I met a clinger. How do I get rid of them? And you have like the wingman strategy and we can go over this stuff in another episode because I feel like you yeah, probably yeah. have a ton of those strategies as well. Clingers. Um, Oof. Yeah, clingers or what do I do with this shy person mm -hmm. that I feel bad for because I'm always compelled to sort of, it's like, Fix but help. for the grace of God, go I, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This used to be me. How do we show somebody that we are not attracted to them with social cues? I think we can talk about attraction and dating stuff, maybe in a, even in another yeah, show, because yeah, yeah. that's a it. whole 
unit. Let's save it. But yep. a lot of, especially females who are networking or in professional situations have a problem because they're going and they're talking with people, especially if you're, say you're a female engineer and everyone around you is a guy, you wanna maybe draw a hard line. Or even if you're just in a mixed crowd, mm -hmm. you really don't wanna have even this, that thought in your head that somebody might mistake your intentions oh. is got to be really uncomfortable. Yes. Okay. So first of all, this works for both sides. One, you don't want people to think that you're hitting on them. Yeah. And two, you want to make sure that you're observing someone like, oh, I want to make sure they're not attracted to me either. So this right. works with both sides. Um, so there's one first nonverbal cue that is um, the most... Uh, it's not flirtatious, but it is one of the warmest cues that we have. Okay. And it is nodding. So, especially in Western cultures, in India it's a little bit different, but in Western cultures... Yeah, you have to do this weird sideways yeah, nod. Exactly. I can't even do it. I always make the exception. I always say that out. I always say that out loud because on YouTube otherwise, all of my followers from India, they're like, but not in India. So I know not in India, it's a little different, but in Western cultures, um, the up and down nod, the vertical nod is, yes, I agree, I'm listening, I'm with you, I'm here, mm -hmm. right? The no nod is side to side. So what? the more that we are nodding, the more someone feels like they are literally into us. They're into what we're saying. So this is great for professional rapport. Sure. But when you pair nodding with a couple others kind of flirtatious cues, lots of smiling, extra loud laughing, any kind of physical touch. So haptics is the fancy word for touch. Okay. And so anytime that we have physical touch, this could be arm touches, this could be shoulder touches, this could be hugs, this could be cheek kisses. Those add as sort of accelerators for the nod. Like they, when they're, you get that kind of oxytocin, we get oxytocin right. from our touch. It's like adding fuel to a question mark of, is this person attracted to me? Is this person into me? Right, okay. So what I would say is if you're really worried about someone, if you want to make sure that they know, you, they know that you're not attracted to them, is actually nodding less. So having a very, very still head, mm. it, it's hard to do actually. Yeah, I feel like I naturally am always nodding. Right, and I, I also as well, so two, year, two or three years ago, one of my New Year's resolutions was to nod less. Um, how, how do you even build that? that practice. Here's how, here's how I think you do it, is if you think you are a bobbleheader, so like, uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh, 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 it's not only very submissive, it's also can border on, you know, I'm into you, depending on what it's paired with, um, is I, so I, it's really hard to just stay still, right? That's really hard. Yeah, it's but a little awkward. Have, I'm you, holding my face still right now, so I don't It's working. Know. Yeah, it's it is working. It's working. It might look a little awkward because I'm <laughs> no, gripping my chin. This is called the Hillary Clinton. Mm. I'm deep in thought. This or this. Yeah, you're deep in thought. So actually, yes, you can hold your chin. That actually works. Right. Um, what I do is I'll do the head tilt. So it's actually, you, we usually don't nod when we're head tilting. Right. It's a little awkward. It's a little awkward. So the moment you head tilt, it still looks like you're engaged. It still looks like you're listening. And that's like exposing your ear, which is listening. But you're not, it doesn't feel like you have to do the nodding. So if I feel myself, even in this interview, nodding too much, I'll just slightly tilt my head towards you. And that makes me hold it in that position as opposed to nodding. I like that a lot. I found myself nodding when you were nodding because we're doing mirroring stuff because yeah. we're good friends and we're on camera in this sort of yeah. artificial situation. There's also, have you seen this thing where like if someone goes like this with their hand, the other person like cannot help but nod? I really resisted it right there. Yeah, yeah. you were holding your I finger. I was forcibly not doing it <laughs> yeah. because we're talking about it. Yeah, and, so, and I'll, the, pro the reason I mention that is because if you're a very handsy person, like I talk a lot with my hands, and I'm doing this without even realizing I'm doing it, I'll see the entire group will be like, mm. Mm. and like, it looks a little cultish. So also be careful if you don't want to, if you want to discourage flirtation or attraction to also a little calmer with the hands, not doing this kind of a gesture because it automatically makes people be like, yes. And when we yes. say this kind of a gesture, the video is worth watching. It'll be embedded in the show notes, but we're looking at the sort of hurry up, winding the clock finger or hand movement where mm -hmm. you're, doing uh how would you even describe uh, uh, this uh, it's like stirring rolling. stirring soup uh, horizontally yeah that made it more confusing <laughs> for sure <laughs> no, it didn't. no it didn't how would you stir soup stir i mean it. you would stir yeah, okay it like this. and now do it horizontally i mean <laughs> that's, that's it if you're holding this i mean okay i'll give you that one <laughs> I'll give you that one. Win for Vanessa. Right. Soup that defies, stirring soup in space because it's not stirring, spilling out. If you're stirring soup in space and there's no gravity, that's what that gesture yes. was. Very useful reference point for most, <laughs> of, most of my listeners. You're welcome. Most of my listeners have spent at least six months to a year in space. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So we, we, we show people we're not attracted to them by nodding less. Nodding less. Um, smiling less. Smiling less. So... <sighs> 
I, I, I want to, can we like dive into smiling for just Yeah, a because I don't want people to be unfriendly. I know. So I really struggle with smiling specifically because on the one hand, you're told from a very young age, especially mm. women, are told smile all the time, be friendly, be likable. And so when you first meet someone, you're told to smile, right? Yeah. Every first impression article ever says smile. And then on the other hand, research is pretty clear that smiling is more of a submissive nonverbal. Oh, crap. S yeah. So you so, can be friendly and submissive or unfriendly and... Dominant. Dominant. Right. Now, I don't like that choice. I don't no. think it's that black and white. Sure. But I do think it's something to keep in mind. So, for example, typically, if you're in a room, and I, whenever I am um, in a room, I always try to cold read the room. This is like the best nonverbal practice. See if you can figure out who the boss is. See if you can figure out who has a crush on who. Mm -hmm. um, see if you can feel if you can see alliances. It's a really helpful nonverbal strategy. You'll often notice that more people are smiling towards and at the boss, and the boss is smiling at no one. Typically, not always. Sure. And that's because uh, subordinates just do. Like when I'm with a VIP, I'm like, ha ha, like I'm a grinning fool. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's seen as like a non-threatening, open gesture. So I like smiling upon first impression. I think it's great to have that immediate like warmth. But I really caution being careful for smiling in a conversation unless you genuinely feel it. The worst is when you have someone who has that man, like maniac smile on their yeah, face. Yeah, that's Mani scary. Is that right? M maniacal? maniacal? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, uh huh, yeah, yeah, tell me more, please. And, and you're like, Ooh. You think they're crazy because they might be crazy. Yes, yeah. and so I say to be careful smiling for attraction, but I also say don't hold a smile because you think it makes you more likable. Because actually that comes across as more inauthentic and more disingenuous when you feel like you should smile so you're holding this fake smile. We would much rather reserve a smile when you actually think something is funny, when you're sharing a story about something you actually care about. That is a much better way to interact and it kind of hugs that line. You're not being dominant, right? You're not not smiling at all. Sure. But you're not being totally submissive and passive. So okay. in attraction cues, it's even more important to only hold that smile for when you really mean it. Um, and for women especially, don't give the guilty laugh. The guilty laugh. Yeah. What's the, this? So the guilty laugh is when a man or a woman tells a joke or says something that they think should deserve a laugh, but you don't really think it's funny, so you laugh guiltily. Okay. Do you have you seen this before? Um, I'm sure I've done it before too. Yeah. Yeah. It's it ha and I I can now feel myself doing it. And it takes this takes a little bit of practice getting out of, um, but try to notice yourself doing it. So it often I find that it often happens when people make the same joke I've heard a million times before. Like for example, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and so without a doubt, if I'm at a conference and I'm like, oh, I'm from Portland, someone maybe one out of every twenty times will go, oh, the land of the hippies. Oh. And I have a choice in that moment. Right. I can just look at them like I'm annoyed. Or not can, a good way to make friends. Not a good way. Or I can be like, <laughs> like, <laughs> so like, so like both yeah. are terrible. Yeah, they're both terrible. Both are terrible. And so that's an example of, and if you have a name that does this, like some people have names that always have the same job. Like Sharona, but I don't think that's probably <laughs> what, not like, anyone's who, name. Have you ever met a Sharona? No, so, no, never mind. That was a terrible example. <laughs> If there's a Sharona out there, I am Sorry sure that. that she has to guilty laugh all the time. Yeah. But there's other there's other names that um this happens with. Like like movie character or TV character names where someone's like, oh, like Katniss from Hunger Games. Right. She's probably no Katniss. Kirk, is out there. if your name is Kirk, you get yeah. Star Trek. Yeah, or like references. my husband's name is Scott, and if if someone says Scotty, people are always like, beam me up, Scotty. Oh gosh. Oh wow. my exactly. That never gets old. Ugh, yeah. Exactly. So what I would say <laughs> is if you really want to make sure that people are not mistaking you from attraction and mm. on bad dates, people are laughing, fake or not. It's just the way right. that they build likability. So if Or break you, awkward tension, right? Because uh, laughter yes. sort of processes any kind of tension. Exactly. Work. It's like a massage for a social interaction. Right. It, it, lubricant. Yeah. Right? It's like lubricant. It makes everything go smoother. So in a situation where you're worried, I'm sending off the wrong cues or I don't want them to think I'm attractive, I would actually just maybe lightly smile or verbally acknowledge the joke. So instead of, so they say, oh, the land of the hippies, like uh, marijuana, ha ha ha, whatever they say, mm -hmm. um, instead of me being like, ha ha ha, which is allowing some kind of traction, I can say, you know, actually I, whatever my answer is and verbally answer the question as opposed to acknowledging it as a joke. Oh wow, so you can just take all of the wind out of that one. <laughs> you can take all the wind out of it, or you can, so sometimes what I'll say is, um, I'm actually a recovering Californian. Ah. So I counter it with another kind of soft joke. So I don't fake laugh, and they go, oh really, Californian? I'm like, yeah, so technically in Oregon, I'm, I'm the stuck up one. Right. 
And that, then we're in a conversation that actually is more interesting. I didn't have to fake laugh. So that's usually what I say is, oh, actually I'm a recovering Californian. Yeah, it moves things forward instead of just throwing the ball back to them. And it keeps it professional. Right. right? Oh, like, she thinks I'm funny. Let me keep doing it. Right, and that's what yeah. happens. Is if you fake laugh, they'll keep throwing out those really silly corny jokes. And then all of a sudden you're like, are we flirting? Yeah. Wait, what? Like I am an unwilling participant yeah, in this flirting interaction. I do, I do not want this. And then all of a sudden when you want to leave, they're like shocked. Right. Like, right. she's into me. Yeah, exactly. She laughed at everything I said. So do not guilty laugh. Good. I'd much Good. rather you take it verbally. And a lot of guys do this with people that are of higher social status or perceived mm -hmm. status. It doesn't result normally in an attraction kind of thing, but it mm -hmm. really makes you, it cements you as the submissive one in the interaction. Yes. And I, I, I will say, like, I am, I've been around what my, I consider VIPs. VIPs are usually, like, scientists that I love. Like, sure. I joke in my book that I'm obsessed with Dan Ariely. Yeah. Dan knows this story, by the way. Met him for the first time and was a total giggling teenager. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, he's, like, my favorite scientist, my favorite writer. And so I couldn't even help that. But being more aware of that that's our instinct to do it, and it's totally a submissive gesture, at least helps you be like, okay, I don't want to go that way. I'd much rather have good verbal responses. And VIPs don't actually like that. Or they don't want you to make those kinds of Right. It makes the, the whole situation more awkward and sort of reminds them like, hey, we're not treating you like a normal person. <laughs> exactly. And you're, and, and you're not someone that I could even be friends with. Right. Like, you've, forget you've, dating. You've written yourself out of the available pool of peers. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Which you don't want to do because normally you want to, in theory, you want to be at the same level as that person I... or try to get near it. We should have a whole episode on like yeah. VIPs because yeah. I have a very... I think in business now, like if you want to really meet people and make good connections with them, it's not yeah. just like, oh, I met her once or I met him once. So we could talk a lot about VIPs and how to approach VIPs. Yeah, you're right. There is a delicate science to this because I'll, I'll and I'm not throwing myself in the VIP pool, but to some yeah, people are. who are fans yeah. of the show, they might be yes. feeling that. There's people who try to, and this, you're right, this is a whole show. There's people who try to be like, I'm going to treat Jordan like an equal. And they, they say things that are like borderline offensive. They're next. That, yeah. And they're trying to be like, we're buddies. So I'm going to make fun of Jordan in front of all these people. And I'm like, dude, I don't know you. Yes. That happens to me all the time. Yeah. I have had, so negging, I, I don't know if you're familiar with that. I remember it from the, the like pickup days where you're like, oh, that lipstick looks really good on you. I think my grandma has that color. Ex yes, exactly. It's or like, like a, neg, a neg that I get often, often is, oh, you're, you're nicer looking than your picture. Wow, that's super rude. I'm like, okay, thanks. Like, yeah. Or someone once told me, um, Oh, you're nicer like than you're you not look. nicer looking than your picture. Your picture's way better than <laughs> or that or that. Because someone once told me I'm nicer like than I cover. look, or I'm I'm not as bitchy as I look. I'm like, oh, you don't. Yeah, hey, that's really for that. And I do have it's RBF. Harsh. Like I have resting bitch face. So anyway, I've never seen that on you. For the record, oh, thank maybe you. it's because you're always so happy to see me. Thank you. It's true. Yeah. And so like that is a neg that I get mm. a lot, and I think that that's exact. I get it from those kind of people. People who want to be like friends but we're not friends right. yet like my friends would never say that to me no yeah that's a good point it's it's an attempt to be like we're gonna be bro -y with jordan i'm like my friends don't say mean shit to me they just <laughs> don't we just don't do that to each other unless we deserve it but you wouldn't know that because yeah. we're not friends I also, right i it's wonder weird. if men sometimes i see like they like are very physical with each other yeah like i'll see like men who don't even know each other that will like shake their shoulders or yes. like punch each other on the shoulder. And I'm like, why would you do that? Does that happen? It does, especially with immature guys mm. or like people who relate on, let me think about this. It's an immaturity thing because I used to do it a lot when I was mm. more shy and awkward because if I didn't know what to say, I'd be like, bam. And some people would be like, why did you just hit me really hard? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Guys do this on TV and I don't know what to do with myself, right? That's high school. Yes. Yes. But I also noticed there is this physical dominance thing that happens with guys and they'll be like, oh man, and they'll like, and I don't even want to yes. do this to you because it's so awkward. Yeah, they'll yeah. put the your neck in the crook of the arm and drag you in almost like a headlock. Yes. Nobody should do this to a female, by the way. It is way too aggressive. <laughs> yeah. But guys will do that to each other. And I'm like, I don't know you. Yeah. You are literally attacking me seen. and I'm freaking out right that, now. That's what I've seen. And I have not seen it done with actual guy friends. I yeah. usually see it done with some kind of a difference where I'm like, ooh, that's sucks. Yeah, that's... So don't awkward. do that. Don't do that. No <laughs> headlocks. No, like... And if you grab someone on the shoulder, you really have to know them well mm -hmm. enough. Like, if I, if I do this, this is fine. We're friends. But if I'm, like, gripping you and yeah. shaking you back and forth, again, I would never do that with a female. I would only do that to a guy I've known for a long time, yeah. and I'm really happy to see them. So um, that's such a good point. So what you should never do non-verbally, I think, is um, also pats. 
So like padding is like a very um, submissive, it's like I'm dominant to you. Mm. So I don't know if you've ever seen this happen before, but like even like the kind of like, kind of pat on like the mm. shoulder, like, yeah, you're, you're fine little one. It's yeah, like that's incredibly weird, awkward it's even very, in very, demonstration. I've seen actually bosses do it to employees and I think they do it well meaning. Like they think like, I'm acknowledging you non-verbally, good job. But actually it's very much like an owner and a dog. And yeah. so never do the pat, ever, ever, ever. So what is acceptable then? We've basically ruled out almost <laughs> every single lot. kind of physical touch. <laughs> basically <laughs> just don't even look at people. Just... Mirror, mirror touch. My favorite okay. is mirror touch. So mirroring is its own very delicate science because I hate when body language experts are like, oh, like if they're sitting like this, then yeah, yeah. you sit so like this. So now I'm like, okay, oh, I have okay. to sit oh. like this now. Now and we're like it's, having a conversation. And we're having, it's, it's so awkward and like it's so rarely done right. But I do like the idea of bids. So Dr. John Gottman is a researcher, marriage and family counselor. Right. And he has this idea of bids that um, couples especially, but everyone, okay. you offer um, a request for a bid. So I might say um, to my husband, how do I look? That's a bid for affection, for reciprocation, for acknowledgement. He can say, you look great, honey. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a, a, a received bit. And you say, not as bitchy as you do on the cover of your book. <laughs> yeah. Zing. Da ding ding cha. <laughs> yeah. That's not how that. No. But I'm bumch. Yes. I did <laughs> yeah, what? Da ding ding cha? No. <laughs> ding that ding is the Chinese <laughs> yeah. equivalent. I, I do speak a little <laughs> Mandarin, so that's where that came from earlier today. Okay. Yeah, so um, he knows that's a bit or a request. This happens in friendships and relationships all the time, or even networking, right? Where someone can say, you know, a question, or they make eye contact, or they make a nonverbal bid. I'm, I'm, every time we do an interview, something funny happens, what? and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> Sitting zing ta. Just gonna, yeah, still going on the, still going on that ta one. Ta means tea. It does. It's a special kind of tea in Chinese. Yes, and I, ding ding. I appreciate you trying to get my brain back into a logical mode so I can stop laughing and continue the conversation. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. okay. You can always laugh. All right. So bids. So so bids. So uh, I think bids happen all the time. We should be better at recognizing them. And this is something that I preach and teach a lot, which is any small bid that's offered should be taken with gratitude and held and received. So for example, if someone does this to you or they're talking, that's actually a bid. So right? reaching out and touching my reaching upper out, arm. Yeah, reaching out and touching an arm or um, you know, uh, put, putting an arm on the back or even like you know, putting an arm on a hand if like you're talking. Women will do this. Can you do this with me just so yeah, I can, so, sure. um, so if you, if you hold up both, both of your hands. Like this? Like, like let's say that you're holding your glass sure. or networking. Women okay. will sometimes do this where um, you just shared something uh, really personal with me and I'll, I'll hold both your hand go, oh, I'm so sorry, or oh, yeah. I know this. It's almost a way of having a hand hug. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I like that. And if you're wondering what we're doing, watch the video embedded in the show notes. It's really good. It's a hand hug. It's a, yeah. You can't get that anywhere else. Here's another hand hug. You want to see it? Yes. That's a hand hug. That's a hand hug. That's I way wasn't better totally than sure what to do there, but <laughs> keep your hand straight and then put your thumb like that. That's oh, that's a, hand a tiny hug. little hand, hand hug. hug. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that is anytime someone reaches out and touches, it is a bid for connection, for affection. And I like mirroring that bid with a reciprocal touch. So either you can touch the hand that they touched you with. So if they put their hand on your shoulder, you then uh, like tap my hand. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Oh, yeah. Right, that's so a way I, of- I receive it. You receive it, or yeah. you can then later or immediately then also reach out and give them that touch back. So I try to only do touch or haptics as reciprocal bids as a way of saying, I feel you, I hear you, we're on the same page. So how do we know who starts then if we're only reciprocating touch? This is a personal rule of mine. I try not to be the first to break the touch out of respect for people who don't like touch. Uh. I have been burned one out of every 30 times. I used to touch, you know, first and you'll get someone who really doesn't like it and it's really awkward. Really? I feel like I've oh. just been mostly oblivious of that and or I probably, you know what? No, that's not entirely true. <laughs> I have done that a lot, and when someone recoils, I usually start marginalizing them in the conversation. So if I'm talking with three or four people, and I touch the person next to me, yeah. and they're uncomfortable with it, I will immediately start talking with other people oh. in the interaction. Oh, you punish them for yeah, it. Yeah, I basically punish them for you it. You take their bid, you throw it on the floor, and you step on it. I'm like, look, you, you're rejecting my touch, you are, you're shunned. <laughs> okay. That's option one. Yeah, that's okay, not that's, nice. That's option one. So I'll, I'll tell you the moment I decided I was never doing this again. There was a moment. I don't think I've ever shared this before. So I was um, pitching a television show at a major network. When, this is when I was living in Los Angeles. And it was a major, major meeting and a big network that you've heard of before. And the booking executive, we had this great meeting. At the end of the meeting, it was a long meeting. It was like an hour. And I was talking about very personal things. And so were they and what they wanted. It went, ended really well. 
So it was one of those moments where I wasn't sure if he was coming in for a handshake or a hug and I felt the meeting went really well. And so I said, oh, I'm a hugger. And he goes, well, I'm not. Oh, ouch. <laughs> no, they, he just like it was spiked a, your bid. It, what, he, and he then he stood there limply while I hugged <laughs> oh, him. Oh <laughs> my God. It was, oh my and, it, goodness. and I didn't get the show and I have Duh. no idea if there's anything to do with it, but I swear it did. I it swear might have. I left the worst last impression. And I I was like sweating afterwards. I felt so bad. And I uh, and from that moment on, I was like, I am never first touching. I'm always making sure that I respect it. Because like, maybe he had like some, you know, people have trauma. Yeah, like, sure. I mean, it was, it was rough. And so I thought to myself, you know what? For anyone who's had any trauma, I'm always going to respect them and let them touch first. I'm surprised. But he said, I'm not. And then you just hugged him anyway. I was already here. I was already, I was like, okay, so put your hand, I was All like, right. with this, and then I, I was like, oh, I'm a hugger, I, and I was here. Hugger. That's where it was. We were like you're, already you're hugging. You're assaulting me. Yeah. That's where it was. And I was literally hugging him while he like limply oh, stood so, in my arms. Oh, I feel the creepy crawlies it was, on my body It was right horrible. Now. And so that's why I say oh. my advice is to try to wait, if you can. But if you're a very, very a touchy person, and that's how you interact with someone, it could be actually, going back to your option one, Yeah. maybe that's a way that you can test people out. Right? Yeah, sure. Like, uh, although in, I will say in professional settings, touch far, far less than in personal settings. Yes, please. Because in personal settings, I can always go, whoa, I made that person really uncomfortable. There are virtually no consequences as a result. But if you're <laughs> closing a real estate deal and you hug someone and they're like, wow, that was incredibly awkward, now, well, congratulations on you meeting your new boss and totally exactly, or me not getting a television show, right? Because I hugged someone wrong. Yeah, well, I guess you're gonna have to go crush it on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, which you've done. Which <laughs> screw you, Boom. NBC or whoever that was. <laughs> it wasn't NBC. Okay, okay. got it. <laughs> You're um, like looking at me. I'll tell you what it was later. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm like, oh, I it's a three. It's a three letter. Oh, one. that narrows it down. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I got it now. <laughs> Vanessa, thank you so much. We have hours of this stuff. We're going to do a lot more yes. because every single thing we, I feel like we create together is magical. freaking gold. Magical. I was going to say magical, but it's then I thought it's too the cheesy. Zading ding cha. <laughs> ding ding cha. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a special tea. Yes. For sale at jordanharbinger.com and right. signsandpeople.com. Thank you. Thank you.